Hello viewers and welcome to Spotlight here on Hope TV where you look and live and we really appreciate your feedback and we will continue to bring you subjects, commentaries on subjects that are helpful in building our faith, especially for the purpose of our faith turning into a force, a force for good in our communities. George Floyd was not known a few weeks ago, but now his name is known all around the world. Not just his name is known, his race too. He was black. The sad thing is that George Floyd is dead. And blackness had everything to do with his death. He died under the knee of a white policeman. And the outrage has led to days of demonstrations across the United States. People of all colors are demanding justice. They are also demanding laws that bring police brutality against black people to an end. The anger, the anguish coming from the suffocation of black-skinned people all point to one statement. Enough is enough. While their protests and marches were initially violent, they have now taken a peaceful tone. It is as if a memory came to the mind of the protesters and they remembered the peaceful, non-violent character of protests during the civil rights movement in the 60s and 50s. These non-violent protests were championed by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. With all his being, he stood firmly against racism. He wanted the white dominated authorities to know that black lives mattered, that blacks were and are as human as human can be. Coming home here in Kenya, Many people like the quotes of Martin Luther King Jr. Even our politicians, when they want to look a little sophisticated, make references to his quotes, especially on matters of negative ethnicity. From observation, most of these quotes are often out of context because very few of us Kenyans have taken time to know Martin Luther King Jr. beyond his famous, I have a dream speech. Now, this commentary wants us to know a little more, just a few more facts about Martin Luther King Jr. so that when we quote him, we can capture not only his words, but a little bit of his spirit as well. King was a black man. More to being black is that he was black at a time when being black meant being a lesser human. He was black in a context of race-based segregation. There were schools that did not admit black people. And as you would guess, the black schools were poorly equipped. Black people were assigned particular seating places in public transport. And to add to this, they were supposed to stand up when a white person came into the transport and needed a place to sit. There were public toilets marked black and others marked white. Public drinking, water drinking places, some were labeled black, others white. There were restaurants that were marked white only. Even those that allowed blacks had black seating areas. Now, breaking this white-black boundary was a legal crime that was punishable by law. Black people did not have voting, voting rights. They had to do with white representation, which is a case of hyenas representing the ship. Black communities, institutions, and neighborhoods were segregated in, in all matters regarding development. Black people, because of the color of their skin, were supposed to remain disadvantaged. 155 years after 
the abolishment of slavery. Black people still do consistently suffer color-based discrimination. You'd expect that 155 years is enough time to achieve what we can describe as race bias maturity, but not quite. King was a family man. He was a husband married to one Korota King, Korota King. He was a father of four, and it's good to know that three of his children are still alive today. King was a clergyman. The reverend part of King was critical in his life. He was devoted to the Christian faith. He was an ordained Baptist minister. And the church was a key platform for propagating his message. He had mastered both the preaching language in church as well as the speaking language in public rallies. His rally language had heavy evidence of his Christian thinking and his speeches had the tone of the spirit and the passion of a preacher. It's good for you to know that he was ordained and became a pastor at the age of 19. King was a scholar. He got his PhD from the famous Boston University. And his PhD as a black man at that particular time was a great accomplishment. His PhD was in systematic theology, of course, meaning that King was a theologian. He published several writings, but he is more known for his speeches than his, his other writings. He was a great orator. He communicated most of his scholarly perspectives through his speeches. His speeches have become a more popular subject of study in the disciplines of religion, philosophy, and history. King himself has become a subject of scholarly study. You know what? His I Have a Dream speech, which is one of the greatest speeches of the 20th century, actually one of the greatest speeches of all time, lasted 17 minutes. Too brief for its fame. He was a social activist. His civil rights champion identity towers above all other of his identities. This is his global identity. His role as a civil rights champion makes him appeal to all people in the world who work for freedom of oppressed groups. Many freedom movements in the world, including the fight against apartheid, cite him as an inspiration. He was bold, devoted, persistent, convinced, and persuasive. By the, amount of by the amount of commitment and risks he took in the civil rights campaign, we can say with a degree of accuracy that he was first married to the cause, then Coretta. He led his first protest march at the age of 26. Now he was famous for peaceful resistance. His mode was described as non-violent resistance. He believed in loving the enemy in a literal way, a very difficult thing for many of us to do, many of our leaders to do. He believed in loving the enemy. He described his vision as one of achieving what he called a beloved community. Now King's nonviolence philosophy had six key principles that are important for us as a people to remember and to know at this time. One, nonviolence is a way of life for courageous people. Two, nonviolence seeks to win friendship and understanding. Three, nonviolence seeks to defeat injustice, not people. Four, Nonviolence holds that suffering can educate and transform. Five, nonviolence chooses love instead 
of hate. Six, nonviolence believes that the universe is on the side of justice. Now, King won the Nobel Peace Prize for his civil rights work in 1964. He was 35 at the time. Though he was daily exposed to danger, he decided never to carry a gun. This said King was human. He is, of course, highly romanticized sometimes, made into a kind of a superhero. But the truth is, he was human. He failed, faced depression, feared sometimes to a point of retreat, fought fatigue a lot, often disappointed his followers, was opposed and hated. He also faced weighty family problems and accusations. But in it all, he took his faith seriously and his cause very seriously as well. You'd want to know that he went to jail 29 times. He was assassinated on 4th of April, 1968. A sniper shot him dead. He was preparing for a peaceful march. Now, the advocate of nonviolence died violently. He died at the age of 39. By all skills, a young person who accomplished so much. In 13 years, he made an impact that changed the United States of America and the world at that time and continues to do so even today as demonstrators ask for justice for the life of George Floyd. In Christian terms, he died for a righteous cause. He was a martyr. It is interesting to note that his last speech, like, you know, that, 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 was, that was titled, I have seen the promised land, foretold his death. He gave the speech and died a few days later. Some of the ways he will always be remembered is that he lived what he preached. His love for God made him love the people. His Christianity did not fight only for the church, but fought for the entire of God's creation. His scholarship did not separate him from the people. It took him closer to them. He did not just say peace, but he made creative ways of practicalizing it. His ambition was not to achieve political power, but to see all humans humanized. But even after all the good he did, some hated him to the extent of assassinating him. Now a question for you to ponder. How are you translating your faith in your community? Now take note that if your faith is only benefiting you, it is long overdue for an upgrade. This has been Spotlight.